afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. It is I, Jeremy Pierce. It is Saturday, July 9th, and you know what that means. It is time for the High Risk Wrestling Podcast. Cashing in that briefcase. We are here. We are back once again. Money in the Bank is behind us, and we move forward to SummerSlam. Oh, man, I can't wait for this SummerFest. Uh, as always, you can check me out on the socials, Charismatic Creations 52, or well, Charismatic Creations on Facebook, Tumblr, and YouTube, Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram, and the 215 on Twitter. Previously, we had our Money in the Bank preview show. And today we're starting a brand new series called, uh, it's, it's, I don't, I don't really know, have a, a name yet. It's, it's about celebrities and professional wrestling. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're going to touch on a few things. This might be a shorter episode. I'm just kind of vibing that way. But for now, you know, it's next. So just go on and hit my music. All right, so as you all know, <laughs> Stephanie is the uh, acting CEO right now. And they had a talent meeting, and she said that her door is always open. The meeting is before Money in the Bank. Um, it was just a st- I don't, I don't believe her. I, I think they're all liars. There's no such thing as a good big man. So. Uh, Tetsuya Nato was one of the big names not at Forbidden Door, and he said, um, he said he wasn't invited. That, that, it's odd. Um, he's, he points it out as, uh, he's not needed, so not invited. Um, that's why he's frustrated. He, uh, he says that he even watched the show, and he's genuinely upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't find anything for Naito. Um, Liv Morgan achieves an incredible statistic with the SmackDown Women's Championship. According to Reddit user uh, DamG1, Morgan's victory was the first time since August of 2017 that a new SmackDown Women's Champion was crowned without one of the four horsewomen involved. Think about that. In seven, in, in, I said 20, 2017, in five years, every single time the SmackDown Women's Championship has been, has changed hands, it has always involved a member of the Four Horsewomen. So, starting with Naomi in 2017, she won the championship at WrestleMania. Uh, Becky Lynch was in that match. SummerSlam, uh, Natalia, Charlotte, Carmella. Like, it goes on and on and on. And for for a very long time, with the exception of uh, Asuka and Bianca, the championship changed hands pretty much between Charlotte, Bailey, and Sasha. More so just Charlotte. So, <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, Tony Khan has stated that the All-Atlantic Championship will be a traveling championship, which means it will be defended in other companies. It will be defended in other countries. Uh, Pac will be defending the championship against Shota Umino, John Moxley's protege at the Rev Pro Show. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. As long as they add the footage to uh, Dark, put it on YouTube, that'd be really, really great. AEW stars went out of the way to defend Colt Cabana after Tony Khan wasn't going to renew his contract, um, which is great. Colt Cabana is a really, really great guy, um, very likable. He knows his way around the business and has a great mind for uh, the business. He was part of the Dark, I don't know if he's still affiliated with them. Looks like he'll be more affiliated with Ring of Honor, uh, but that's that's really, really good. <laughs> Arthur's of Pain canceled their first ever WES show. Uh, and there's a lot that come out of this. Um, their 
saying that you know talent didn't want to come. It, there's a lot. Uh, I, I go online and look it up. There, there's a lot, lot going on. Um, Sasha and Naomi have officially been removed from the etern- internal, not eternal, internal roster, which is starting to confirm that yes, they are no longer with the company. Um, Sasha and Naomi both pretty much confirm the exes as they don't they're not listed as wwe wrestlers on their instagrams so and guess what sasha and naomi were right because ever since they were removed and the championships were taken from them they've done nothing with the women's championships nothing and i wouldn't be surprised if nothing happens with them uh, and next, he saw a nice little viewership with the Great American Bash special. They brought in 593,000 viewers. That's up from 570,000. They did a .12 in the 18 of 49 demo. So it's not much. The most they've had since May 3rd was the May 3rd show where they brought in 661,000 viewers. Uh, Bailey is preparing for her in-ring return as she's at the Performance Center, so I can't wait for that. Ilya Dragunov will be vacating the NXT UK Championship due to injury. Uh, as you know, he did defeat Walter for the championship at TakeOver 36 last summer. Uh, he has one more title defense, which was taped, and then he'll be dropping the championship. Pat McAfee signed uh, an extension with WWE. Uh, he's very, very good at his job. He's very good. He brings a lot to the commentary desk. And I don't think he's getting fed lines in his air because he doesn't need this job. You know what I mean? He doesn't need this company. Uh, Dynamite saw a drop in viewership falling slightly below under a million viewers. They brought in 979 thousand viewers with a point thirty six of the eighteen to forty nine demo. They'll be fluctuating. I hope they stay right around this mark actually. Zoe Stark is expected to return soon from injury. Her and EO were a tag team and uh they were both actually got almost got injured around the same time. Zoe had a torn ACL and meniscus. So we'll see what she looks like when she comes back. Uh WWE are starting to invite independent wrestlers to uh tryouts again. Uh, after focusing on college athletes, listen, they just can't not bring in independent wrestlers. They're the better talent. They're the really hard workers. AEW and Stardom could be working together soon. It looks like they'll be announcing a partnership, which is really, really great. Uh, as you know, the only women's match on Forbidden Door was a was an AEW women's match, and. Uh, it looks like Stardom is also going to be start working with New Japan as well. And um, AEW, they're trying to break down traditional wrestling politics while they're in talks with Stardom. This this is this is, this is is going to be good. And Stardom really wants to work with the AEW, especially Tony Storm. She has history there. This is great. This is going to be great. Tony Khan lets it be known that Penelope Ford just injured. Um, she, and she hasn't been medically cleared. She hasn't wrestled since... Back in January, which is wow. Um, she's been in some great, brutal matches, and I'm hoping she can come back. <sighs> More news about Vincent Kennedy McMahon. The was it the Wall Street Journal reports that Vince paid four women $12 million over the past 16 years. The payments are alleged to have been aimed to keep them quiet about sexual misconduct and inappropriate relationships um yeah he paid one former wrestler back in 2005 7.5 million dollars he had coerced her in oral sex she was demoted and then her contract expired in 05 after she uh, resisted additional counters um there's there's a, there's a lot <laughs> it, it, it looked like things we're, we're dying down. They're, they're still cooperating with the investigation that there to be. They, they let everybody know that, yes, they're still cooperating with the investigation, but this is tough. And Netflix has, at the moment, pulled the Vince McMahon documentary series after the Hush Money scandal. Will it come back? 
probably they already put millions of dollars into it. They already got the interviews. They already got all the stuff going on. Um, we don't even know about the Hulk Hogan movie, but this is this is a wild, wild ride. But that's the news, and we should be right back. Well, we've got our money in the bank fall out. So for Monday Night Raw, uh, the show was okay. Got a yeah, so we're gonna get a fist. So Lashley opens the show, celebrating his championship win. Theory comes out, and he's like, "Yo, how come you get to open the show? I'm Mister Money in the Bank. How do you know?" And Bob was like, "Dog." <laughs> I don't, I don't care. Whatever. Uh, so they will have a rematch at SummerSlam for the United States Championship. Uh, Theory attacks Lashley with the briefcase, and then Lashley just lays him out with like a giant spine buster. It was pretty hilarious. Um, Rey Mysterio and Dominic beat the Judgment Day with the Eddie Guerrero chair spot. They won by BQ. Uh, the Judgment Day are floundering hard. They're floundering so hard, and it's not even funny. Uh, more stuff with the Miz's boss, and he reacts to, which I didn't cover, Logan Paul's signing with the WWE. <sighs> we have the Street Profits cookout um, and a hot dog eating contest featuring Otis, Angelo, and Beer. Uh, and the winner was Akira Tozawa, who was just in the cut eating hot dogs. Whatever. Uh, AJ Styles beat The Miz, and then um, and then he teams with Ciampa, and they lay out AJ to surprise. Logan Paul wants to be cheered. He's very much hated. He's a hated individual. He should never, ever be cheered. He's a trash human being. But this looks like they will probably be end up doing AJ and Logan versus The Miz and Ciampa at SummerSlam. Um, Liv Morgan comes out to talk about her championship win. She's confronted by Carmella and Natalia, which leads to a tag match with Bianca and Liv, the Raw and SmackDown Women's Champion, respectively, defeating Carmella and Natalia. That's it. Um, Seth beat Ezekiel. This happened because Ezekiel got a catch up on Seth at the cookout. And then Seth went to go beat up Ezekiel again and the real just RK with him out of nowhere. So. Yeah, Lashley and the Street Profits defeated Austin Theory and I in the Alpha Academy. Otis vomited. Gunther beat our truth. Alexa says she's got title aspirations, and Becky Lynch beat Oscar in a no-hose bar match. She won with a manhandle slam off the top rope to a table. Also, once again, the Dirty V does not understand what a no-hose barred match is. They just they don't know. Over on AEW, it's another okay fine show we're deciding what's next so we opened up with Wardlow winning the TNT championship from Scorpio Sky we'll see where this goes uh, I feel kind of bad for Scorpio Sky Ethan Page they just can't catch a fucking break Christian and Luchasaurus beat up Matt Hardy Swerve and Keith Lee beat the Butcher and the Blade and the Ricky Starks and Hobbs come out and Ricky Custis fire fire promo god it was so good um, and then the Young Bucks come out and announced that there'll be a triple threat tag team title match next week. Eddie Guerrero, not Eddie, Guerrero, Eddie Kingston promo. Um, these to the JS taking out Ruby Soho. The Dark Order will not die. There's been rumors about their ending coming soon. This was just a fun segment. They were in Rochester, home of Brody Lee. Um, they take out QT Marshall. Roosh beat Penta. The Acclaimed and the Gun Club won a tag team squash match. The Gun Club then turned on the Acclaimed. We thought it would have been Billy joining the Acclaimed, but no, 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 blood is thicker than water. And now the Acclaimed are faces. Check that out. Um, Layla Gray is an interim baddie, so we'll see where that goes. And John Moxley retains the interim AEW World Championship over Brody King in a solid main event. Over on Impact, the Impact Corner, Mike Bailey retains the X Division Championship over a debuting Allen Angels. Eric Young returns to confront his team. He's upset with them. The Bullet Club and Honor No More aren't done. And Mia Yim defeats Diana Perrazzo in the main event to become the number one contender for Jordan Grace. Over on SmackDown, the show started out strong. 
finish. Weak as hell. More money than about bank father. Roman just arrives. Uh, that's it. He comes out. He talks. Asks Paul Heyman why he's upset. Paul Heyman cuts another beautiful Paul Heyman promo. It's it's a master class and just what you need to do to get people on matches. Over theories on a stage. Comes out and taunts Roman with the money to bring briefcase. And Roman, Roman's like, you know, who is this? Okay. And that was the last we heard of Roman and Usos for the rest of the night. That's what y'all paid to see. That's, that's what y'all paid to see. The Viking Raiders squash Jinder and Shanky and then the New Day cash in their ass beating tickets to um, <laughs> get their asses beat by the Viking Raiders. I'm sorry. The new vicious Viking Raiders. Uh, Gunther did not an open challenge, so Senshke challenges Ludwig. Shinsuke wins, and then Gunther chops down Ludwig for losing. Whew. Corbin was on commentary for this entire match and just doing things that uh, Pat McAfee usually does. Remember, uh, Pat wasn't there because he's selling a, the attack from Corbin at summer at uh, Money in the Bank. This was fun. Liv Morgan Emery promo, another happy rah rah. I'm the new champion promo. She's gonna run about Natalia. Ronda comes out to make the save. Ronda beats Natalia. Natalia's lost three matches and this week. Uh, more with Max's models. This is weird. Let's say the least. Lacey Evans was supposed to team up with Aaliyah. Their opponents were never announced. Aaliyah's in the ring. Lacey comes out. Doesn't she gets chair? She's like, well, uh, she she wants a bigger chair. She co- goes back in, comes back out, doesn't get a bigger chair, does it one more time. <laughs> Cuts a promo talking about yo, you supposed to be cheering me this, that, and the third. Finally, finally turns heel because she should never be a face, and she gives Aaliyah the women's right. So we'll probably get that match next week. Um, the Usos defeated Los Lotharios, and the main event was supposed to be. Uh, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus and a number one contenders match who faces Roman. We got the bait and switch. And it was Drew beating Butch. And that's how the show ended with Drew standing tall, taking out the ropes with the sword. And remember, the Dirty B got on Sasha and himself. We're sorry we wanted to do this match, but it didn't happen. That's not what we wanted to do. And they advertised this match all day and didn't do it. Hot meat kettle. Over on Rampage, Eddie Kingston did, uh, beat uh, Konosuke to Ke- Takashita. It's a really good match. Was, this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. Uh, Jonathan Gresham turns heel on his active partner, Lee Morardi, and joins with Tully Blanchard. Mercedes Martinez and Serena Deep win a squash tag team match. Serena then turns on Mercedes, tapping her out. And in the main event, Orange Cassidy defeated Tony Nese in a fun match. Our matches of the week. For Money in the Bank, the undisputed tag team championship match, the Usos versus the Street Profits. Go back and watch this fucking match. It is amazing. From Raw, the New Hulk's bar match between Asuka and Becky Lynch from NXT. The North American championship match between Carmelo Hayes, the champion defending against Grayson Waller from Impact. Mia Yim versus Diana Perrazzo from Rampage. Eddie Kingston versus uh, Konosuke Takashita and Orange Cassidy versus Tony Nese. Our star of the week has to be none other than our new SmackDown Women's Champion, Liv Morgan. Now, as you know, celebrities in wrestling kind of go hand in hand from Muhammad Ali to um, rock and wrestling to David Arquette. And even to today with the dickhead that is Logan Paul signing an official WWE contract. It's a it's a thing. It's unanimous, man. And um, I, for one, enjoy it. It's it's easy. It's a it's a mix. It's a match that just works. And I thought 
it'd be time for us to really take a a look at um the connection the things that that have happened and this is will be an ongoing series until it is well until it's no longer an ongoing series but first uh we shall start with Shaquille O'Neal yeah Shaq now Shaq is a life long wrestling fan he has made numerous appearances for many many companies all right he grew up a wrestling fan his favorite wrestlers are tony atlas the junkyard dog andre the giant and brock lesnar so where did well where, where, what was shaq's first appearance 1994 he made it a, he made several appearances for um wc W. He was at the Bash at the Beach pay-per-view presenting the winner of the World Championship match between Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Um, he has made appearances on the WWE, but he has two major, major appearances. Obviously, the first is an intended match that was supposed to happen that we never got between Big Show and Shaq. This was easy. It was so easy to write this. And with Shaq. Um, says. Was that. There are a few things. That didn't happen. So the match was supposed to go down. At WrestleMania 35. Shaq accepted. Big Show and Shaq were calling each other out on social media, posting workout videos. It was all great. Then the match got canceled. Now, according to Dave Meltzer, the match was canceled due to monetary reasons. Both parties could not agree on a deal. Whereas Big Show later stated it was scheduling. This was on Sha- on Shaq's part. So I don't know who to believe. It could it it could be both. I mean, Shaq did appear at WrestleMania 32 in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. The uh, def- uh, uh, eliminated Demi Sandow. He had a had a conversation with the Big Show, but that's what we wanted. WrestleMania 35. We wanted Shaq. We wanted the Big Show. Never got it. Never, never, never got it. Then came AEW and the rise of Jade Cargo. Jade new signee rookie greener than baby shit interrupted cody and she teased the arrival of shaq now this this was supposed to lead to a tag match between shaq and jade versus cody and brandy um shaq made a cameo of being the elite and it confirmed that he would be around right he appeared on an episode of dynamite with a sit-down interview with tony and brandy rhodes and Shaq got water thrown in his face. Shaq is always game for this stuff, so um, it's fine, right? Jade had broken Brandy's arm, but in in in, in reality, um, Brandy was pregnant, so that's why she couldn't be in the match. So it shifted from Brandy to Red Velvet, who's part of the Nightmare Factory. Now today, if you if you watch Red Velvet, was one of the baddies in Jade Stable. Um, but we got we got the match. It opened up an episode of Dynamite. It had no business being as great as it was, because the only true true wrestler here that could guide everybody in this match was Cody. Jade is green. Shaq's not a wrestler. Red Velvet is green. Shaq paid tribute to Brody Lee using his signature jester. And um, gave a couple of power bombs out. Shaq went through two tables. Cody hit Shaq with a flying crossbody. Shaq was standing on the apron and Cody just ran crossbody. Shaq went through the tables. Jade wins with, I believe she won with the jaded 
and that's what we got it was <laughs> it was fun it felt real uh it shows you that when you when you work on these things and you can figure it out i'm trying to figure out how did it work with Shaq, but not work with um the dirty b that's what that's what i really want to know but hey that's what we got it was fun um how about that one pack man jones so uh y'all know pac-man jones it was a pretty solid corner in the league but always always in trouble So while he was in trouble, he got suspended. While he was suspended, he had a stint with TNA, now known as Impact Wrestling. So what did what did Pac-Man do here? <laughs> he won the TNA World Tag Team Championships with Ron Killings. Let that sink in. So he was suspended and he, there was an agreement that he would have a non-physical role in the company. And yet he went on to win the tag team championships. This was in 07. Um... I don't remember. I need to remember who they defeated. Um, let me see. F -f Find it. Team Pac Man. No surrender. They defeated. Was it no surrender? Yes, they defeated. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? They defeated Kurt Angle and Sting. The <laughs> Our truth, Ron Killings did all of the mat, all of the work, and then Pac-Man Jones pinned Sting after Kurt turned on Sting. <laughs> When we talk about a lot of bad moments in professional wrestling, when it comes to celebrities, this is one of them. This is one of them. I just... How, how long did he even have the belts? Team Pac-Man 07. They lost. The, they held the belt for 35 days, losing to AJ Style and Tom Kohuber Christians Coalition. But consequences Creed, who you now know as Xavier Woods, was a substitute for for Jones. That actually happened, folks. That's actually happened yeah now a person who i am i just i just don't like is machine gun kelly i used to like him but fuck him whatever why is he on this list for one of the best moments ever in the history of wrestling you know exactly 
what I am talking about. No idea what I was not. Okay. Kevin Owens powerbombed MGK through a table off the stage. Yes, that actually happened, and I am so happy it happened. I will never, ever, ever forget it. He he just did not like MG. He just he just did not like him, and just took this man and just power bombed him off the stage. Just dead dead and i listen i'll give mgk credit for taking that bump i'll give him credit because he (laughs) he murdered that man but how about a famous uh famous one that's is very it's infamous it's infamous and whatever how you want to call it you know the it involves butterbean well what about butterbean first of all who is butterbean butterbean is a retired professional boxer kicks boxer mixed martial artist and professional wrestler in the heavyweight division so what happened with butterbean he was in the brawl for all y'all remember the brawl for all right yeah brawl for all was a shoot fighting tournament held by the wwf 1998 it ran from june 29th to august 24th it was created by vince russo this was a legitimate fighting event (laughs) now why that is the first thing that's the first question why We don't even need to talk about the results. Nobody cares. This involved Butterbean. A legit boxer was paired up against Bart Gunn. (laughs) And do you know what, what, what happened with this? You, you, you know what happened? So Bart Gunn wins the wins it and he's paired up against Butterbean at WrestleMania 15. Still one of the worst WrestleManias. And this is the one held in Philadelphia. It's such a bad WrestleMania. It has its moments. What do you think was gonna happen when you paired up a professional boxer with a professional wrestler in a shoot fighting event? Butterbean knocked out Bart Gunn in 35 seconds. <laughs> he got fired right after that. What? What did you think was going to happen? Butter <laughs> Butterbean is a pro boxer. Knock this man out there were so many injuries in the brawl for all and it's better that we don't talk about it anymore hell dark side of the ring covered it (laughs) what did we learn oh and in this series we are going to talk about another boxer in a match Uh, we'll get to that at some point but not today yeah, that that happened. <laughs> Another low moment. How about 
a favorite of mine. We'll, and we'll close with we'll close with this. Okay, we'll close with this. John Stewart, the great, great political commentator, comedian, actor that he is. Well, he's also a lifelong wrestling fan, and he began a comedic feud with Seth Rollins in 2015, seven years ago. Wow. He appeared on Seth's Daily Show style segment, and Stewart returned to host SummerSlam, right? The main event was Seth Rollins versus John Cena. All right. This was a winner takes all match. Okay. Seth was the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. World Heavyweight Champion. Cena was the United States Champion. Winner take all now you're thinking well Stewart is going to help Cena right going to help Cena no 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 John Stewart helped Seth Rollins win costing John Cena the United States Championship so Cena executes the AA on Rollins for the near fall. Rollins executed his own AA on Cena for the near fall. So Rollins attempting a pedigree. Cena counter into the figure four, right? Rollins counters, but Cena reaches the rope, forcing a rope break. Cena goes for a second AA, but in the process, Rollins kicks the ref. Stewart, who is the host of SummerSlam, ran out with the chair. Assumingly, we thought he was going to help Cena. No. He hit Cena with the chair. Rollins pedigree Cena on the chair one two three John Cena loses thanks to John Stewart and why did John Stewart do this he said he did it for Ric Flair who was also in the audience he didn't want Cena breaking Ric Flair's record <laughs> I did it for the rock. I did it. I, I I did it for the rock. He did it for Ric Flair. Oh man. Ugh. I love great moments like that. Cause just when you think you're out, they pull you back in. So that's what happened. So out of everything on my list, I'd probably say Shaq and John Stewart are my favorites. Everything else in the middle was like bad. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think. We got a we got a lot more moments to cover. I am happy to just do it and talk about it. I think uh, I'll see how I get the boys together. We'll do our first episode, the true first episode of the Filthy Cash. We're talking about some uh, rest celebrity wrestling moments. For sure. Um, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're checking us out on YouTube, as always, you can check out my socials on Twitter, the 215 Charismatic Creations on Facebook, Tumblr, and YouTube, and Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram. Next week, we will start another new series, The Unwarranted Push. I'm taking a look at people who've gotten pushes when they really shouldn't have gotten them that early or maybe got them that late this is going to be a fun fun segment um i'm sure we're going to talk about but as always again i appreciate you all and zia lee wendy chu and Gigi dolan holla at your boy peace